Hello? I am Lost Generation. This is Medieval. Let's play level 3, the Hilltop Mausoleum. Sorry about the replay message. I did play through this before and then discovered I wasn't recording. You won't have missed anything. The replay's levels are exactly the same. I also missed the chalice, so I don't even have a fancy weapon to show off. I'll avoid that in the future. So, the mausoleum. There's a new enemy, and it's the only enemy in this level. They're the imps. They have the same health as the zombies. I believe they do the same damage, but they're harder to hit with melee weapons. Uh, I was about to show that with a club, but it seems I don't have it. Robert, there's a new one in this chest. There's something else in the club I hadn't noticed before. A direct hit does more damage than the splash damage. So a direct hit kills the, the imps instantly, and the splash damage kills them in two to three hits. Uh, don't go crazy with the club here. You need it to break these things, and there's a... If you run out of the club before you reach a certain point, you can get stuck in this level. And there's only one club. So, while I know what I'm doing, if you're not familiar with the level, stick to the sword. It kills them almost as quickly. Energy vial there. As you can see, there's light coming out of this one. So, if you don't care about the energy vial, just go straight to this coffin. This book here is a, it's correct, but it might make you a bit paranoid. None of the imps with torches can steal your weapons, and the imps that can steal your weapons don't show up in this area. So, for the time being, ignore that, but remember it later. Squashing imps. To me, at least, they're a bit more satisfying to kill than the zombies. Uh, these are spikes. They will damage you. You can smash them with the club, or jump over them. I recommend smashing them, and you'll see why in a bit. Also, one point where the daggers are actually useful. You can't shoot through the spikes, but the daggers arc over them. Normally. Like that. Also, actually using the daggers for a change made me realize I was wrong about them. Charging up doesn't do more damage, it just throws three at once. So even when you charge them up, the daggers are really weak. You don't have to kill these imps. You'll, if you just grab the key and run, you'll fill up the chalice anyway, because that happens. And imps falling down the hole counts towards the chalice. Even if you don't kill them any directly, they still go towards the chalice. And that's why I smashed the spikes. If you hit a spike as well as taking damage, it stops you in your tracks. And if that happened there, you'd instantly lose an entire bar of life. Uh, if you fall down a pit or lava or anything like that, as you've seen, you're revived just outside of it by a life bottle, so it's not an instant game over, which is nice. And this is why you want to save the club. You see here, there's two spikes in a row. You couldn't jump that. If you're out of the club before then, you'd never get past them. Uh, I don't have the room for this door yet, but I'm showing it now, so later on when I have the room, I can just cut straight back here without showing me walking to it. Another nice thing is that, unlike some games, if in it, for shorter enemies, Dan will swing lower. You don't have, to, don't have any arbitrary, can't hit them because they're too small. Ridiculousness. I'm using a crossbow here, but similar to the club, you should probably save your ammo. Uh, I know I mentioned last time it's going to be a boss fight. You want to save the crossbow for that. It'll be a very long boss fight without it. And these, as you just saw, these are the imps that steal your weapons. They don't have a torch. You have to be pretty careless to actually lose your weapon. They take a long time to... Once they've taken it, if they go into the hole, the weapon's gone. But it takes a long time to do. If you lose a weapon, you can get it back. But, as I'll show, you don't want to lose a weapon. It's painful. So... Normally, if you're playing, you just never let them steal a weapon, but in order to show everything, I'm gonna give up the small sword. Uh, reluctantly, as you saw. <laughs> you then wait a very long time, and he'll eventually run away with it. I think it's nice that they actually model the imp carrying the weapon. They could have just had him have a sack or something, but he does carry it. 
And once he's in the hole, it's gone. And as I've already shown, if you go back to where you originally got the sword, it's just a bag of money. You can't simply get it back that way. So instead, first of all, there's a book here. And if you're skipping the books, uh, at this point you want to stop doing that, because they start giving you clues on things like puzzles. The chalice isn't always going to be out in the open. This time... Oh. this Also, the merchant has something new. Secondhand goods. 600 gold. Uh, that's our starting weapon. 600 gold. Even if I had not bought any ammo, I wouldn't have 600 gold by that point. So, if you lose a weapon and you, say, save the file afterwards or something, to get it back you would have to really grind money. So, I suggest just don't lose a weapon. Unless you're showing it off for a let's play. Uh, I'm going to cut back to the blue gate now. Yeah, nothing happened on the way there, so I figured I'd leave out the walking. Similar to before, you don't have to kill these imps when you grab that sheet music before it collapses again. But, eh, it's only throwing daggers, so I kill them. Uh, I had full health, but I don't like leaving things on the ground. I don't know why. I won't be coming back to the Phantom because something does happen on the way back. Since one of those imps did manage to steal a weapon and get away, he's still there. I never killed him. Which means I have to show one last thing, or two last things. They can't steal Dan's arm, so you'll never be unarmed. Sorry. I'll stick to being informative from now on. Also, if he steals either the club or the throwing daggers, since those weapons do respawn... Well, again, it takes quite a while to do. Even if you're only using Dan's arm, you could kill them pretty quickly in the time it takes for them to run away. I'll show it as well, but since those weapons can be replaced without spending any money, they don't show up as second-hand goods, they're just gone for the rest of the level. Still, if you'd lost the club before you'd broken anything, again, you'd be stuck. Well, not stuck, you can complete the level, you just couldn't get the chalice. Which is here. And now that I have it, you've probably noticed what looks like a boss fight arena, but no boss. So, I'm going to be coming back again. Oh, sorry, just showing that the merchant doesn't have the club. Even after three gold chests, I still can't afford my own sword. So, cutting back to here, where the red room goes. Uh, you push this block forward to the heart that was mentioned in one of the books. And that will release the boss. Which may seem like an odd thing to do, but we saw in an earlier book that says he has a key that we need. So, we have to do this. Uh, the glowing thing on the left is just a shield. I already have a full shield, so I ignore it. And throwing daggers, I mentioned you want to stock up on crossbow bolts and save them. You need ranged weapons for the boss fight. They provide throwing daggers, and you could kill them with them, but it'll take a while. The crossbow is much better. Uh, and that wasn't intentional, that wasn't me showing something, that was... accidental. And I'm quite worried here, because I'm worried that when I go through the door, it might take me out of the level before I get the crossbow. But thankfully it didn't. As I've already said a few times, fighting this guy without the crossbow is not nice. So, I was worried for a few seconds there. This is the Stained Glass Demon, our first boss fight in the game. And boss fights are one of the best parts of the medieval series, so if you haven't... If you haven't been too keen on it so far, believe me, the games get better. I seem to break him a bit here. I'll show the first attack again, because that didn't show it too well. But, as you also may have seen, the amount of damage I did with the daggers... It was manageable, you could beat him with them. But, once you see what it's like with a crossbow, you'll see why I prefer it. That's roughly a third of his health. And this attack, whatever weapon you have, hammer on X, even the crossbow with rapid fire, you have to hammer X, you can't hold it, and you break free without taking any damage. With the normal attack, you jump over, and his third and final attack 
shoot him as long as you dare. But when he's done charging, hold triangle. You can't avoid that, you have to block it with your shield. I could kill him on the next attack, but I want to show it off because I somehow broke it last time. So this time, stand still. You can't avoid this attack or block it with the shield. And at this point you might think I'm in trouble because one of his attacks you need a shield for. But they're nice, and if your shield breaks, they give you another one because you would be in trouble otherwise. I've never tried running out of ammo. I don't know if they give you more daggers or just expect you to kill him with your arm. But, considering how many daggers they give you downstairs, that's unlikely to happen. And, yeah, first boss is fun and he looks amazing, but it's a first boss, it's not difficult. It's almost a perfect run except I ran into him at one point. Uh, he would have dropped the skull key there, because I'd accidentally not recorded the first time. That's what he would have dropped. He then has with weapons, if it's only you've already got, they drop a small bag of coins instead. Now it's on to the Hall of Heroes to get a very nice weapon. It's the Hall of Heroes shopping mall. Bargain hunters should check out the ground floor. Well-to-do shoppers should check out the upper floor. That's where it's at. Now, from him saying that, you'd think you're meant to go upstairs, but as you're about to see, it's just a uh, cargo being weird again. The stairs look transparent, and that's because they are. You can't go through them. If you read the book, it'll explain. You have to have got all the lower statues, a chalice for all the lower statues, before you can go upstairs. Which is why this guy is glowing. I don't know why they mentioned the upstairs already. You can't go there yet. Not that it matters, because you want to talk to this guy. Ah, Fortescue! What's this I hear about that Archcad Zarog still being alive? Thought you killed the fella! <laughs> Never mind, you old warhorse! Better show him what's what, eh? I expect Johnny Zombie's a bit more of a handful than you remember! How are you doing for weapons? <laughs> Here, take my warhammer! It'll smash anything and it won't fall apart like a club! I only ever get to use it cracking walnuts around this place. Hmm, yes, yes, definitely, yes, get the hammer. Nonsense, Fortescue! I won't take no for an answer! Knock a few heads for old Stanyar Iron Hewer, eh? Zombies and walnuts be warned, we have a great weapon. Like the club, only it doesn't break. You can set it on fire, but it doesn't break. And instead of poking people with it for a second attack, you charge it up and you get an area of effect explosion. So I'm not too upset about losing the sword. The hammer is really good. Also, Dan's statue is still really faded. Apparently he's still not a hero, which seems a little unfair. But for now, that's it. I'll probably switch to a different save or grind for money so that I get the sword back, just in case I do want to use it to show anything else. But, if you're actually playing, just don't let them steal your weapons. Uh, again, if I hadn't accidentally played before, there would have been a cutscene where the graveyard opened up a bit more to show we had the key. So, the next level is Return to the Graveyard. I am Lost Generation. The game is medieval. I'll see you then.